and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of Council of the Public. Um, so the state of Ohio Auditor's Office has mandated uh, some fraud training for uh, all city employees and all municipalities in the state of Ohio. So this, this, in, this did include our part-time people, such as our school lifeguards and our part-time fire and EMS personnel. So I was my task to uh, handle the elected officials since I do work one-on-one -on -one with them. So I couldn't think of a better time to get everyone on one spot than just do this at the beginning of this meeting. There is a deadline for us to submit this information back to the state of Ohio. It is in early September. So once we knock this off of our list, uh, we can submit that to the state of Ohio. I've also sent an email directly to Mr. Lindsay uh, with a link to this, and should he have any problems, he can email me. But it is only eight minutes, so just bear with us right here while we watch this, and maybe we'll learn something. I'm Auditor of State Keith Faber. This training is a result of a recently enacted law and is now required for nearly all Ohio public employees. This training will provide you with the tools necessary to detect and report fraud and maintain the strict ethical standards required by your position. Too often, my office is required to issue findings for recovery of taxpayer dollars or other sanctions against Ohio entities and employees that could have been avoided. This training will provide you with the knowledge to help you avoid these penalties associated with fiscal wrongdoing. More importantly, it will assist you in recognizing potential criminal activity by others and give you the information necessary to report to law enforcement or the auditor's special investigation unit. As public servants, we are expected to do our jobs with the utmost honesty as we serve Ohio's taxpayers. I thank you for your service to Ohioans, and if you have any questions after the training, please feel free to contact us at the auditor's office at either ohioauditor.gov or 1-866-FRAUDOH. Thank you. Welcome to the Ohio Auditor of State's training video on reporting fraud, waste, and abuse in government. As public employees, it's our responsibility to ensure that taxpayer dollars are used efficiently, effectively, and transparently. That requires a rigid adherence to the ethical behavior that taxpayers across Ohio have come to expect from us. The overwhelming majority of public employees come to work and do their jobs with the highest level of professionalism and pride. But on occasion, there are bad actors who take advantage of their access to public funds and resources. These types of behaviors are rare, but when they do occur, no matter how big or small, it severely erodes the public's trust in our work. Before we begin, here's a bit of background. The brief training you're about to receive is just one layer of a robust fraud reporting training that is required by law of all state and local government employees. Each public employee is required to receive this training during their initial onboarding and every four years thereafter. By learning the signs of fraud, knowing your responsibilities when fraudulent behavior in government occurs, and knowing how to report fraud to the appropriate authorities, you can play a key role in preventing loss of taxpayer resources. And as a public employee with an inside perspective to the day-to-day -day doings of government, you are the first line of defense in stamping out fraud, waste, and abuse. Let's begin by defining our three main categories, fraud, waste, and abuse, and then look at examples of each in the context of state and local government. <coughs> First, fraud. Fraud in government refers to intentional deception or misrepresentation for personal gain or to deceive the public. This could include embezzlement, bribery, or falsifying documents, such as timesheets or financial statements. Let's look at an example. In 2019, an employee of Smith Village created fake invoices for services that were never provided. They arranged for a family member to receive the contract to provide those services. When the invoices were paid, the employee and their accomplice pocketed the money. This scheme lasted for three years before being discovered, resulting in losses totaling $30,000. For 
routine task. Let's look at an example. The Office of Finance is looking to purchase new technology for its team. The department decided to purchase desktop PCs for all administrative employees, all of whom had already been issued laptops. As a result of this oversight, many employees decided they don't need the new machines, and the PCs end up in storage, unused and wasting taxpayer funds. If the Office of Finance had issued the machines only to employees who needed them, they could have saved money. And lastly, abuse. Abuse excludes fraud and non-compliance and involves actions that a prudent person would determine to be unreasonable based on the circumstances, such as requesting reimbursement for an expensive meal or asking an assistant to pick up dry cleaning during working hours. Let's look at an example. The director of communications frequently has his clothes dry cleaned. It's common practice that he sends his admin out once a week to the dry cleaners 20 minutes from the office. Not only should the director be responsible for his own laundry, but it is also obviously inappropriate to have the admin run errands on state time. It's important to note that the examples we provided are not comprehensive or exhaustive definitions of fraud, waste, or abuse. But if something doesn't look right, it's probably worth looking into. It's crucial for us to remain vigilant and report any suspicions of fraud, waste, or abuse. Suspect fraud? Speak up. We'll do the rest. Let's take a moment to discuss how you can report suspected bad behavior to the Ohio Auditor's Special Investigation Unit. Ohio law requires that any known instance of fraud, waste, or abuse be reported to the Ohio Auditor of State. There are several options you can use to make a report. You can report online through the Auditor's website. Make a call to our Special Investigations Unit and speak to our intake specialists. This may require you to leave a message outside of business hours, but our staff will contact you. Send an email to our Special Investigations Unit that details the information you want to report. Make a report through mail, sending our Special Investigations Unit a narrative and any substantiating documentation you may have. All public organizations have a working relationship with staff at the Ohio Auditor's Office. If you suspect fraud, waste, or abuse, you could make a report to a member of our audit team. In this case, they could assist you in providing the necessary information to our Special Investigations Unit. Anyone who makes a report to the Auditor of State's Special Investigation Unit should expect one of our intake specialists or investigators to reach out to them. The more information that you can provide, the greater we're able to thoroughly investigate your claim. Remember, making the report is the first step in stamping out unethical and illegal behavior in government. It's important to note that public employees are protected against disciplinary action or retaliation from their employer for making a reasonable and good faith report of suspected fraud, theft in office, or misuse or misappropriation of public money. That means your good faith report of suspected fraud should not impact your role or status as a government employee. Thank you for taking the time to watch this important training <coughs> video. By working together to detect and prevent fraud, waste, and abuse, we can ensure that taxpayer dollars are used responsibly, effectively, and transparently. Remember, it's up to all of us to uphold the integrity of state and local government in Ohio. No, I don't think we need any of you. Wish everyone the best of luck. I'm going to head out uh, so you guys can have some open and honest discussion. Thank you.
Well, let's move on and um, city manager report, committee reports. Um, comments from members of the public. Anybody got anything? If not, we'll move on. Resolution to ordinances and other business. Okay, I've got clerk of council and city council applications and I would like to address the council first. Uh, first one I've got on top of my list is Josh Shear. Josh, if you want to come up to the... Matter of fact, I think we might be better off to bring a... You want to bring a chair up and, and sit in front? I think that would be easier than having somebody stand at the podium. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's going to be fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you guys walk up here. We don't have people up there. We just please Mr. Mayor, I thought we were having everybody wait outside. That's what they usually do. Uh, I absolutely agree. Because it doesn't feel quite right to have everybody. I have heard discussion both ways. Okay. What is council pleasure? Do you want to... Uh, I guess the word is to interview the individuals individually in a one-on-one -on -one, quote and basis without the audience, or do you want the audience to be here? I think one-on-one -on -one would be more comfortable. You want one-on-one? -on -one? Mm -hmm. one -on -one. You want one-on-one? -on -one? Okay, I guess that's the way we're going to do it. So Mr. I will ask the audience to please step outside. Do we go? And on? we will call you back in one at a time. Do sorry guys, Mr. thank Mayor. you. Do we go into executive session for this or not? I'm sorry. Would we go into executive session for yeah. this or no? I just want to clarify. See, I think so. Yeah, I don't. In, in the past, we moved to executive session, mm -hmm. everybody stepped outside, mm -hmm. and you interviewed them mm -hmm. individually. In the past, All right, do you, you wanna... interviewed everyone together, and then mm -hmm. you went into executive session to discuss the candidates. Been a few do you want to do the? I, 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 it's, they've done it both ways. I looked yeah. up in the minutes. So, like one time they had them all lined up and sat in a row, and you guys asked the, the same question to each one. Yeah, yeah, we've done it both ways. Go ahead. Uh, when we interviewed for for now, Mr. Bond seat, it was an open forum. We interviewed That's four or five. Um, in public, um, one was excused, there were no one-on-ones. When we did my seat almost five years ago, now granted it was during COVID, um, so it was all online, but it was still um, me and the other gentlemen were, were both there at the same time. So, Mr. Law Director, what's your opinion? I mean, I think it's better to do it public. I mean, you're always Do it public? Yeah, it works better be in public. I have to disagree, but I kind of do too. I just think it should be executive session. I believe so. Everybody will feel comfortable. I was give me a motion to go into executive session. Motion to go into executive session, Mr. Second. Mayor. Second. Right. Okay. Vice Mayor Eggleston. No. Mayor Cook. No. Councilman Bond? It really doesn't matter either way, really. But, um, yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. And Councilwoman Wright? Yes. So it's 3 to 0. We go into executive three session. Two. Motion to go out of executive session. Second. Second by Vice Mayor. All right, Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. All right, and then I'll tell them to call, go ahead and come back in. Mm -hmm. There are. Yeah, if you want to. I don't know. Are they still out there? They, they were when I went out there. Well, I know. Anybody know how to use that? Christine. Uh, that's a good question. I don't. Let me give it a, I'll give it a whack. Just press it again. The, just don't hit the red button. 
Whatever you do. No. <laughs> oh, I didn't know we were taping this. Were we well, taping Well, we weren't. Yeah, I was looking it up again. Christina and Jessica, right? Jessica? Christine. Stay yeah. We're on. I think it did record the whole time. It's going to be a late supper. Yeah. Really? <coughs> I gave my hamburger to the dog. So. Quarter after three. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of time. Quarter after three. We are moving at right a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll water wait. <laughs> okay, we're back into regular session. All right. um, Mr. Mayor. Council, go ahead. Uh, make a motion that we open nominations for the clerk position. Sorry. I have a nominee, I have a no Yeah. A motion and a second. <laughs> All right. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. All right. Up to five zero. Now that we've opened the nominations, do I have a motion to, uh, or a name to appear before us? I nominate Christine Stapleton. I have uh, Christine Stapleton's name. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. 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 Mayor, we would be closed nominations. Well, I have a motion to close. Do a second. Second, second was right. Yeah, Peggy. It's me. Eggleston, sorry. Okay. All right, close nominations. So then, let me get this set up here. We'll vote first for Christine. Christine Stapleton. And yes, Shammy was the second, so we'll start with Councilwoman yes. Wright. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. We'll vote on Christine, right? Correct. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. I think I should abstain. Okay. Uh, just because I'm kind of related to her. Oh, okay. Oh, we didn't know. <laughs> and Councilman Shammy. Yes. On the Stapleton side or? Um, uh, one, two, three, four. That is a four, two, zero, one. So, so she just won it. Stable so, will be yeah. your next clerk. That's fine. Okay. All right. Um, do I need a motion then to move the council selection to next week? Or However you guys want to do it. Just, yeah, make, what, if you're going to do it next week. Or not. Motion. The first meeting in September, September yeah. 3rd. Yeah. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Second. And I have a second. Shammy and a second by right to do the official vote for the vacant council spot on September 3rd. Okay. And Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. And Councilwoman Wright. Yes. All right, that's accepted 5 0. With that, I need a motion to excuse Mr. Lindsay. Sure, I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, Shammy. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Motion to excuse except with five that, zero. Uh, is Motion there any adjourn. other business that needs to come before I second, council? I second that. Then I need a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Eggleston Shammy, Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook? No. No. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shannon. Yes. <laughs>